Hey folks, if you've been following along in the last several episodes of Code Club, you know that I've been trying to explore different alternatives to a bland ordination plot. I didn't mean to say bland, but bland, right? Uh, in my sense, an ordination is basically where we take all the data, we throw it into a figure, and we ask the audience to kind of interpret the thing the way we want them to see it, right? And that makes it really hard on our audience to make, you know, pretty fine scale comparisons between different points, especially different sets of combinations of points, right? And so what I'm trying to get us to is really focusing in on the data that we want the audience to see in the way we want them to see it, right? So a couple episodes ago, we started looking at uh, different interval sizes between different time points. And then what is the average distance for that interval, right? So like a one, two, three, four, five, ten 10 day interval, you know, what is the distance, the average distance between points that are say five days apart from each other relative to one day apart. In the last episode, we then looked at a time course of a one day interval, right? So we, we plotted the distance over, you know, a time series where the distance was kind of back to the previous day. What I'd like to do in today's episode is plot the distance back to some reference point. And so in my study, I'm looking at these mice as they were weaned from their mother going out about six months, five months, I guess. And what I want to do is compare them to the day they were weaned. Now, for your application, you're probably looking at something different, right? So perhaps you treat mice with antibiotics and you want to compare the mice back to uh, the right before they were given the antibiotic. Or perhaps you've got bioreactors and you feed in some new substrate and you want to calculate everything to uh, the, the time before the substrate was added, right? Or perhaps you're not even dealing with time, you're dealing with space, right? And you've got some gradient of some pollutant and you wanna compare the community to something that's, that's far away, right? So what's the distance uh, between two communities that are say, you know, 10 meters apart versus five meters versus three versus one meter apart, where that distance uh, is kind of, you know, some gradient of, of a chemical, right? So there's a lot of different applications for what we're doing today. But again, what I'm gonna do is compare everything to day zero. Here we are in our studio. I've got a new R script, time zero plot dot R. It's about 15 lines. We've seen this before. If you wanna get a copy of this down below in the description, there's a link to a blog post where you can get this. Also up here, I've got a link for a video where you can use all this information to get caught up, get the code, get the data. And so you can hit the ground running coding along with me. So this script reads in an OTU count table. Uh, it's called a shared file generated by the mother software package. What we're doing is we're filtering out the days that aren't between these two intervals, day zero through nine and 141 to 150. Um, and then we generate a Bray-Curtis distance matrix. It's rarefied to 1,828 sequences per sample. I'll go ahead and run all this so we can get going generating our figure. Very good. So now we have mice dist. Uh, which I will use to start a whole new pipeline. This is a distance matrix structure in R. And so I need to get it into a tidy format. And so a couple steps that we've seen, but I'll go back through. Uh, we need to pipe this into as.matrix uh, to get it out of the distance format into a matrix format. And from there, as tibble, where we can then do row names equals uh, samples. We now have our distance matrix with the first column being the samples. Uh, for the rows and the column names are the same thing. And then we have this square distance matrix. You can see on the diagonal are zeros because that's the self comparison between uh, the distance between its, a sample and itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and pivot longer um, to get it to be three columns and we'll do minus samples. And so now we've got samples, name and value. Again, value is the distance. And I wanna look at one triangle of this distance matrix. And so I'll do filter samples less than name. Again, this now gives us one triangle of that distance matrix and also removes that self comparison. As we've seen previously, I also need to get the animal identifier and the day from the samples column and the name column. To do that, we'll go ahead and do a mutate. I'll do animal A equals str replace on samples. And then we'll do D uh, period star. So that will match the D and anything that follows the day and we'll replace it with nothing. And then I'll do the same thing, but for animal B, and that will be on the column names, which is the name column. And then we want the day, the day post weaning. And so we'll do day A as str replace, and we'll do samples comma period star D. So let's match everything up to and including the D and match it with nothing. And then we'll pipe that into as.numeric. And so what we can now see is that we have animal A, animal B and day A as a double. Again, note that this pipe 
is inside the line that we are generating uh, day A. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this so we can generate day B. So again, that will be a B and this will be name. And great, we now have our columns. So again, I'm only interested in comparing the distances for the individual animal relative back to day zero. And so I'm not interested in comparing F3 to F4. Um, and so I need to go ahead and add a filter. And so we'll do filter animal A equals animal uh, B. And then I'm pretty sure, but I wanna double check that all my day zeros are in day A. So I'll do filter day B equals equals zero. Yeah, and there's nothing there in day B for day zero. But what I do want is day A equals zero. So I'm gonna add that here and do day A equals zero. Because again, I wanna get all the distances relative back to when the, the, the zero time point. All right, so let's go ahead and feed this into ggplot. AES X, I'm gonna put day B, uh, because day A is zero for everyone, right? And then Y is a value. And we'll go ahead and group uh, by animal A. Again, animal A and animal B are the same value in our data frame. And then we'll add geom line. We get these two clusters of points for the early and the late time points. Um, and so what I wanna do is go ahead and add in a new variable for the period. And so I'll do that back up here in this mutate block where I'll do period equals if else uh, day B less than 10. I'll call that early. Otherwise I'll call it late. And then I'm gonna add a facet wrap so I'll do tilde period. And I liked having the day on the x-axis and then having the distances on the y-axis. And so that basically they have the same x-axis and the, the same y-axis for the two panels. So I'll do n row equals two. Also, if I, if I leave it like this, then I'll have two panels where the x-axis goes from zero to 150, zero and 150. So I want each panel to have its own x-axis. So I can do scales equals free x and so now we can see sure enough we have those two panels for the two periods um, again these are distances back to day zero so this should be one uh, day one um, two and a half right and and so let's go ahead and clean up this x-axis because that's a bit annoying so we'll do scale x continuous and we'll do breaks equals one to 150 uh, again we're going to do some cleaning up of all this formatting I'd like to also go ahead and add in color to indicate the sex of the animal. So I need to add a sex variable. And again, the F in the animal name is female and M is for male. So I'll do sex and we'll do if else uh, and we'll do str detect on um, animal A. Uh, and then the pattern I wanna match is F, then that's gonna be female and otherwise it's gonna be male. And then we're gonna add to our ggplot in the AES, we'll do color equals uh, sex, oh, and I'm getting an error. Problem while computing sex, if I'll string attack animal A, F, blah, 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 unused argument, male. And I'm noticing, so that, that's not a very helpful error message, but I do notice that I don't have a closing parentheses after this F, right? So I want to string detect F in animal A. And so now I'm worried I've got too many parentheses. Yeah, so it's telling me I've got an unexpected token here, right? So I need to go ahead and remove that. Uh, and then now everything should be good. Uh, so I don't see anything really going on by sex so much. I'm sure we've got this female mouse that has pretty high distance relative to, to her day zero. Um, but um, otherwise, these all seem pretty steady in terms of their distance back to day zero. Whereas if we look at the early points, I sure want to see with my eyes, I mean, maybe I'm biased, I don't know, that we have lower distances on day one relative to day zero than we have further going out. So if I fit a line through this, I would expect it to be a bit of like an asymptotic curve, right? So let's go ahead and add that line. So I will add geom smooth. And so I will then do group equals period. And I need to put that in an AES function, right? Um, because I'm mapping uh, the period onto the group. And so that needs to be in an AES function, right? And then we'll do SE equals false. So we don't have that cloud around the points. And I'll go ahead and make the color equals black. And I know that I want it to be thick. So I'll do size equals two. And so sure enough, we can see with the early that the distances start low and they go up and they kind of flatten, um, which if you remember the previous episode, you'll recall that right about this point where things have starting to flatten, uh, the, the distances between days is starting to fall down, right? 
And also we can see for the later time points that for the most part, they're all about the same distance back to day zero. So that's pretty cool, right? So now what I wanna do is move on and see if we can't make this figure look a little bit more presentable for something we might wanna put in a publication. So as always, the first thing I'll do is theme classic to clean up the appearance. That looks good. So I think I'm also going to go ahead and remove those labels for the early and late panels. I think it's obvious that they're early or late if they're for you know the days that it says on the bottom. So I'll go ahead and do theme and then we'll do strip dot text uh, equals element blank. Nice, so that cleaned that up. Um, let's go ahead and clean up the colors a little bit uh, to match what we had in the previous episode. I can come in here and do scale color manual and we'll again do name equals null and then breaks uh, female and male and then value of, um, I think we had purple and lime green. And then we also have labels of uh, female and male. And it's upset with me because it says arg error here, argument values is missing with no defaults because I put value rather than values. Very good, so now we've cleaned up the color and this color scheme matches what we've had previously. So now we need to go ahead and clean up our axis label. So we'll do that with labs and X will say days following uh, weaning. And then Y will be Bray Curtis uh, distance to uh, day of weaning. Okay, and a plus sign on that. And so that looks pretty attractive. I'm gonna go ahead and save it and I'll save it as time uh, zero plot dot PNG. And let's do width uh, equals five, height equals three. I like to save it with the dimensions I want it to be outputted as um, before I start mucking around with things like font sizes, right? So my x-axis fonts are all overlapping with each other, but this is kind of a square dimension, but if I output it in this rectangular format, five by three, uh, then maybe there won't be so much overlap. So I like to get things out into the file format that I'm interested in before I do a lot of fine tuning of like positions and sizes and whatnot. Good, so overall that looks pretty attractive. Um, my Y axis label is a bit long, so maybe I'd wanna put a line break in there, perhaps um, after the two. Um, certainly these X axis labels are too big. They're overwriting on top of each other. Also my legend labels seem a bit big. So why don't I go ahead and fix the Y axis label and then we'll come back and reassess. So like I said, I'll go ahead and put a line break in here with the backslash N. Um, now let's look at the legend and see if we can't make that female and male a little bit smaller. And so to do that, we'll come into theme and we will do legend dot text uh, element text size equals seven. So that made it a little bit smaller and then you can perhaps notice that it then made the plotting window itself a bit wider. So let's go ahead and make the X axis text a little bit smaller now. So we'll do axis dot text dot X as element text size equals seven. So the numbers are a bit smaller, but they still kind of run into each other. One thing I notice is that the spacing between the legend and the right side of the, the right panel uh, is, is pretty big. Let's see if we can't go ahead and shrink that down. And to do that, we could do legend.box. Uh, and there's two variables that I wanna check out. One is box margin and one is box spacing. So I'm not totally sure which one I want. So let's start with margin. Uh, and that is going to take the margin function. Uh, so let's try some extreme value. So I'm gonna try all zeros. And that didn't really seem to change anything. Let's go ahead and then and do spacing. Uh, and that takes the unit function. So we'll say unit, uh, let's try zero and then in units of inches. So that got rid of some of that dead white space between the legend and that right hand panel. Uh, still the numbers on the X axis for the, the late period still kind of run into each other. Why don't we go ahead and see if we can't make the figure a little bit wider, maybe go up to six inches and see if that doesn't help the situation. And so that certainly looks a lot better, more spacing on the X axis for those time points. Um, I'm pretty happy with the way this looks. One thing that I would like to do that I mentioned in the last episode though, is that we have a break in the X axis and these breaks can be a bit controversial. I think they're the biggest problem when you start connecting the lines across the break 
um, because then people don't perhaps notice that there's a break in the x-axis like we have here. So I think we're okay because we don't connect across those lines. One thing that we might think about doing though is drawing a box around the two panels. So let's go ahead and do that. And we can do that with panel dot border and we'll then do element rect and color equals black. And that gives us a white rectangle over our data. So we need to change the fill, I believe, to be NA. So fill equals NA makes it transparent. That is much better. Um, and so now we get that border. Uh, it is a bit of a different line thickness than the axes. So why don't we go ahead and see if we can't boost that a little bit. So we can make those lines a little bit thicker by doing size equals one. So that gives us a thicker border around the two plotting windows. You know, I'm not totally sold that I like having that border, but I'll leave that in here. What I would encourage you to do is maybe go back to the last episode where we generated a similar plot where we're looking at the day-to-day -day, uh, difference rather than the day back to day zero distance. Um, but I didn't put the boxes around that. So see if you can maybe go back to that last episode and put your own boxes around those plotting windows, those panels, uh, and, and see what you think. If it helps to uh, tell the audience that these are two distinct uh, groups of data. Um, you know, um, you do what works well for you and ultimately we really want to avoid misleading our audience. So maybe take two versions and show them to different people and let them tell you what they think. Hey, you let me know what you think. Do you prefer it with or without the boxes? Leave a comment down below in the notes. Well, I really hope you've enjoyed this episode. And again, thinking of different ways that we can represent distances that we might normally represent in an ordination. Again, I think this has a lot of different applications beyond my own data set here. Um, again, I think you could do um, distance to some time point uh, in, in a number of experience, experiments. You could also do distance, geographic distance, right? Like a spatial distance back to some other point. Um, and especially that would be valuable if there's some type of gradient or if there's some kind of source pollutant at the reference point and you kind of want to see how does the community change as you move away from that pollutant. Again, there's all sorts of cool different things. Let me know down below in the comments if you've done a plot like this and um, you know maybe share a link to the paper where you did it so we could all see what you did so we can all get more ideas of how to think differently about representing distance data that's better than perhaps doing it as an ordination. Anyway, let me know what you think. I've got one more idea up my sleeve for how to work with distance data that doesn't involve an ordination so that you don't miss that episode. Please, please, please subscribe to the channel, click that bell icon and give me a thumbs up. Also, if you have other ideas of ways to play with distance data that doesn't involve an ordination, let me know and maybe I can add some, some more episodes. That'd be fun. All right, keep practicing, try this with your own data, tell a friend, and we'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.